For this video, I want to introduce you to the smaller Chidi printers, the single extruder printers such as the X12 and more commonly the X Smart. They both have very similar interfaces. The screens and the software get updated throughout the years, but it's essentially the same. So I'll show you that in a moment. All the demos I've done so far have been done on the Chidi Tech 1, and that is the dual extruder, a little bit bigger bed. And we've done all the, the demos such as starting the print, leveling the bed, changing filament, removing the print. All this stuff has been done on the Chidi Tech 1. Now we're going to look at their single extruders and specifically here is the X12. So why don't we take a look at the screen in a moment and just a few differences are the color. Obviously it's a blue printer versus the black one. The bed is a little smaller and it has a single extruder. But otherwise it, it prints very similar, it has similar tolerances. Uh, everything going into it is very similar except for the price and the single extruder. So let's take a look now at that uh, touch screen interface. So the main difference you can see here is you've got icons on a touch screen as opposed to buttons, you know, left, right, up and down and center. So let's just take a look at the menus and see what the differences are. Uh, whether you're on a Chidi printer or a MakerBot, uh, whatever it might be, all this stuff is pretty much the same. You have a, a place where you can print from, you have a place you can do uh, you know, maintenance or uh, options or tools or whatever it may be called. Uh, but for the most part, you're either trying to print with the printer or you're doing some sort of uh, maintenance or uh, leveling or changing filament and that sort of thing. So let's go to the first thing is let's go to print. And you can see here you have a list of things to print. Right now it says drawer bracket dot g code. So the Chidi Tech 1 those take a proprietary file called an x3g file. These take g code files just like you would have on a CNC router. So that's one difference. Also these take either USBs or SD cards. It depends on the type of printer, uh, but very similar to the, the Chidi Tech ones. So all you would do to start a print was select your print. It gives you a little preview, which is pretty great. You get a little picture of what it's doing. And then all you have to do is hit, you know, the play button. And then it'll start your print. And then it shows you the same stuff, you know, how hot everything is. You don't have to worry about left extruder, right extruder. And uh, it gives you kind of uh, the whole breakdown of it. So I'm way back out of this. Hit stop. So the printing is very similar. There's a button that says hit print and you hit it and it starts printing. Now if you need to change the filament or level the bed, you can probably guess which one it is. It's not going to be after sales service or systems. Let's go to tools. And under tools you have manual, which is you can move the bed, you can move the uh, extruder left and right, forward and backwards. You can move everything manually, which means by buttons. So not by hand, which is what manual you would think is, but you can move the uh, everything in its axes. So I don't really do that too much unless I'm just moving the bed up and down. Uh, preheat is very similar to any other printer just like the Chidi Tech 1 where you just want to preheat and uh, you know maybe change some of those settings in there. So let's go over there. Let's go to preheat. And this is a little different. So it's a little confusing. On the left you see like a little flame and underneath that you can see the nozzle. So if we touch, let's say, the nozzle, and we touch that temperature, now it turns on. And then you can change the temperature higher or lower by going left and right. And that's going to be your, your preheat temperature. So it's all right there for you to see. Let's go up here. And you see it's at 55, so that's going to be your bed. You can see the flame is on like a flat sheet or a bed or something. Uh, so that's the bed and you can change the temperature there. So to turn it on and off you touch the numbers. And to increase or decrease you touch the arrow. So a little different than it is on the Chidi Tech 1. Uh, filament. 
very similar, still kind of confusing. So you've got an E and an E, an extrude down and an extrude up. And then the number in the middle is going to be your temperature. So it's kind of like preheating, right? So if you want to preheat and then manually feed your filament through, follow the same instructions as I showed before. I want you to always feed your filament through before you, uh, you know, always load before you unload. And let's get out of that. I can go back. And uh, let's see, let's go to level. Very similar. You just kind of read the screen. Uh, you know, the bed, uh, you got to get that distance between the bed or the build plate and the nozzle. So you're just going to follow the same instructions that are on the screen. And it's going to be very similar as the instructions on the Chidi Tech 1 for leveling the bed. And again, you want to go back, you just hit this arrow that goes backwards. Stop is going to, you know, stop anything that's happening, your preheat, what, what not. Let's go back. And that's about it. So really, it's the same. All these printers are very similar. It's just, is it a touch screen? Is it, you know, are you clicking buttons? Uh, they used to be all controlled by computers. So I used to have to plug my computer in to the, to the 3D printer. And uh, that's how I used to control printers. And that was another piece of software, but now we're doing it by an SD card, so the software is built into the printer, but you need a screen, so that's why those screens are a little different. But play around, you know, try to get a print going, experiment with the different types of prints. Some have beds you can actually remove to make the uh, your print come off a little easier. Some beds are bigger, some are smaller. Well, you know, we also have to cover the CR10s, the larger printers. But once you use one of these printers and you get used to settings, your supports, leveling the bed, it really translates very well to other printers. Just like if you have to print paper on another printer, you don't always have to learn that printer, you just have to learn how to print. Uh, so try some different printers and have some fun. Our printer is preheated. Our extruder is all ready to go, and now we want to unload the filament. You would think that you would just simply hit unload. Uh, unfortunately, these printers will jam. There's a bit of plastic uh, down in the hot end that will actually uh, form a little teardrop shape. And if you extrude it, that will jam and get caught between the advancing rollers. So what you want to do is actually extrude it a little bit so that the filament goes through there's no little bits of plastic that are hard and everything going through is all warmed up and then you can uh, then you can unload the, the printer. Sometimes I'll actually just press down on the release here and just manually pull it. So let's see what happens if we just try to unload it. Work great. But you can see that little blob of filament on the end. So we gotta make sure that we snip that fresh before we load that. And then we can feel little vibrations of those uh, little rollers on the filament and then we can also see it advance to the bottom in a few seconds. So that's ideal if we can actually unload the printer but normally it doesn't go that easy normally it gets jammed when doing that so what I would like you guys to do is when you want to load the filament and it's preheated go ahead and hit extrude like I did and you can see the filament is coming out it's hard to see on this camera but it's extruding so now while it's actually going forward there's a little button you can press down here release it and just simply pull that out so I don't even bother hitting uh, unload. I actually just let it keep loading, press that little lever. It's a little hard to see. It's down right in here. And it's hard to press. It's kind of narrow in there. Um, you might need to use a pencil or something to push straight down and uh, unlatch it. And then when it comes time to load, simply make sure you have a freshly snipped end and hit load. And then it's going through. It 
The other way you might try, which I did earlier, it just doesn't always work, is as it's um, loading, hit stop, and then unload. And here you can see it was successful. The whole tip is uh, melted over, but a lot of times that forms a teardrop shape that gets jammed inside there. And then I'll show you next how to actually open this up and how to uh, do maintenance on this printer. If your printer gets jammed on loading and unloading the filament, uh, it's typically one problem. The end of the filament normally creates a little teardrop shape and that gets jammed somewhere between the hot end and the rollers. So I'm going to show you how you can actually take this off, remove the motor, the heat sink, and the stepper motor, and we can find that filament and remove it. So at this moment there is no filament in here, there's nothing jammed up, but I want to show you um, how to take this apart. So we have our smaller Allen wrench and we can take that on the side and there's a small little bolt holding in this plastic piece. So you unscrew that, make sure you keep that in a safe place and the top simply pulls up. And what you have here is you have a cooling fan, you have a heat sink, a piece of metal with some uh, fins on it, you have the extruder, stepper motor. So what we need to first do is take the fan off. Um, I do this hot normally because sometimes the filament is actually stuck in the hot end. So I want to keep this going, but you got to be careful because of that fan, and that fan breaks super easy. So let's start by taking these two bolts out. I'm not going to take them out all the way. I'm just going to loosen them. Loosen this one too. And you got to be careful, there's multiple parts in here. So once they're loosened and this stuff moves, you can pull the fan back. And there's a piece of black metal, usually it's black, right behind that. And you'll see there's a fan. You just heard me hit it with my finger. Uh, it didn't hurt, but you can break that pretty easily. So there's a fan, a couple of spacers, those bolts that go all the way through, and this heat sink. So the heat sink fins should face the fan, and that flat area should face the uh, heat block down here, the heat sink, I should say, and also come in contact with the front of the extruder. I'm going to put this back and just try to keep it off to the side. Uh, quite often, you can kind of just let it dangle, but make sure nothing's going to hit that fan. And then you have the, um, let's move that a little out of the way, it's buzzing there. So you have the stepper motor, and you have this plastic with the spring. This is just the extruder. So if you, if you notice, you push down on this, and it pushes this roller out of the way. That's what puts tension on your filament. It comes through the top, it goes between these two rollers, and pops out the bottom. So what normally happens is that filament can go through here. Let me just show you really quick. Um, this is that lever I pressed down earlier when I want to do the quick release when I'm doing the unloading. So it's extruding and I, this is what I'm pressing down. So you can see it moves those rollers out of place and then you can move that filament. But if this end has a teardrop shape, it can't go through that hole. It gets jammed right there or it gets jammed in between those rollers. So normally you can take this motor off. The filament is usually going to be snapped right there or it might even be uh, in in this little hole right here. Um, it might be in this little hole, little hole right here and it will probably come out of there but that teardrop shape will not get through there. So if you have to, you can even, because remember the filament is going to be stuck in there, so you can actually take out this bolt as well if you need to. And that's the only thing that holds the extruder in, in place. Again, everything's super hot here. you got to be really careful uh, what you're touching. And you also have to be careful with this because there's a spring in here and this might pop out. So take that bolt, secure it, and then what you get is, let's pop it on here, this piece right here. It's a little arm. You can see the rest of the extruder is bolted on. You can take the rest of it off right there with that little bolt there. But once you do that, you can get the filament out, get it out of your way. This can go back here. Our spring fill out. 
So let's put our spring back in there. Kind of get everything lined up. And then that bolt goes right back up in the top. Be careful, there's a little spacer in there. There's all sorts of little parts that can fall apart. Basically there's a brass piece of tubing in there and the screw goes in the tubing and the tubing goes in this piece of plastic. 